In this video, we're going to take a look at a green ink by Pilot. They're mixable light green. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around. But if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the green ink playlist. So if you wanted to see more, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, no spread, nice shading in the stub, really nice shading in the extra fine, standout, awesome shading in the medium. Now the extra fine and medium are right about the same tone and the stub is a bit darker than the two of them. The extra fine took 13 seconds to dry while the medium took 17. The scrubby for both don't show a ton of color variation but that writing is awesome. And the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Waterman graduate with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. Now we got no bleeding, but we do get it going very deep into the page on the stub. It's not bleeding all the way through, but man oh man, look at that. It leads to a ton of very hard ghosting there, I guess we would call it. No feather, no spread, no shading, no way. Tons of shading. Look at it. It shades really nice in the extra fine. Still really nice in the or sorry, really nice in the stub, still really nice in the extra fine. It is still giving shading with the medium, though not near as well as it did in the extra fine or stub. Now the extra fine's a tad bit lighter than the stub, while the, the extra fine is a bit lighter than the medium, just a bit lighter. The extra fine took 17 seconds to dry, the medium took 27. Scrubby for both are showing some color variation. We definitely get it in the writing. And a smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we have a very bright yellow on bottom, which is kind of unusual. Normally we see the yellows show up on top in a chromatography, but that did not happen here. We wind up with the green on top. And I was really looking to find out if that was a mix, but I'm not seeing any sign of a blue as a mix. So I'm really just seeing a yellow and a green, which I think is why it shades so well. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's put in the water. It looks exactly the same. So I don't expect any kind of resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, but we are getting some fair amount of ghosting in the stub where it goes on a bit thicker. We have no feather, no spread. Some shading does show itself in the stub where it's very dark. It definitely shows through very well in the extra fine. And it shows itself in the medium without any problems. The medium's only a little bit lighter than the stub, enough to let more shading come through. And the extra fine, lighter than the medium, but I think the shading looks better in the medium than the extra fine. The extra fine took 10 seconds to dry while the medium took 17. Scrubby for both do give color variation. I think it's better in the writing and the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it did better than I expected it to. I still wouldn't use it in a note-taking situation because of what's going on with the lowercase h. Water is doing largely what I expected, which is reactivating and lifting most of that ink up off the page. And that's because it only took water to get it out of my pen, and we saw the chromatography. Pen flush does everything that water does, nothing more, and the one-third bleach solution, you're not going to need it, but it destroys it. The next writing sample is done on yellow rhodia paper. 
This is done not to look at performance difference, but in tone change. And I was very interested in it because of the yellow and it being a mixable ink. And what we do see is we do in general get lighter tones. Just showing that this is a little bit more transparent. It's much more affected by the tone of the paper underneath than a more opaque ink. I still think it looks really good, but I actually prefer it on the white over the yellow. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Pilot's mixable light green has a viscosity of 2.42, making it normal. The next writing sample is done on life paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. No feather, no spread. Nice shading in the stub, better shading in the extra fine. It looks really good here. Medium looks really good and it's really quite opposite. Much more of the medium's darker and it's showing off in the lighter tones where the extra fine looks to be mostly lighter showing off in the darker tones. Now the extra fine is a little bit lighter than the medium and the medium's much darker than the stub or much lighter than the stub. The extra fine took 11 seconds to dry while medium took 18. Scrubby for both do show some good color variation because it is there and the smear test you couldn't recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Pilot's mixable light green has an average dry time of 17 seconds, making it not just normal, but average. The last writing sample is done on Levenger paper. No bleeding, no ghosting, no feather, and I'm backing up as I say that because I see feathering like crazy here. I don't know why I would have even said that. It is feathering in the stub. It is giving tiny feathers in the medium, not so much in the extra fine. Now the stub and medium are the same tone. The extra fine's a tad bit lighter. So it's not working too well here. Now we're not getting much for shading, though the extra fine does have a couple of spots that occur. The extra fine is lighter than the medium or stub. It, it took four seconds to dry while the medium took six. Scrubby for both, they are showing a tiny bit of color variation, but we only see some spots of it in the extra fine. And a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Pilot's mixable light green, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a black ink by Robert Oster, their green black. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description is links to those playlists. So what do I think of this mixable light green by Pilot? This is a very Joker green. I like it. It's a fun tone that shades well and is bright on the page. I can see this as a standalone color, not just for mixing. So what nib and pen we're gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? I think a just medium flow fine does absolutely perfect. It puts down both its light and dark tones and shows off both of them nicely. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Noodler's Cape Cod Cranberry.